We will now call the Common Council meeting of April 6th to order. Roll call, please. Alderman Here. Here. Yeah. Here. 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 Everybody, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Melissa, would you lead us? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, just before we start the meeting, just a couple things to note. This meeting uh, will be held by video conference. A few people due to the pandemic going on um, throughout the area. Uh, we do have one alderman that is video casting in along with our city city administrator and um, our assistant city administrator as well. Um, and while I'm on the subject, uh, voting. Catherine, would you like to quick make an announcement about the ruling that went on for anybody that's streaming about voting hours tomorrow because voting will take place? Certainly, the presidential primary is spring. Now is it done? There you go. The spring presidential primary and general election to be held tomorrow on April 7th, 2020 will uh, take place in person. All voters in the city of Oak Creek will need to uh, appear at the Oak Creek High School between the hours of 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. to cast a vote in person. Um, absentee ballots um, may be received here at City Hall. Um, until 8 o'clock p.m. there you can bring those to City Hall or we have a drop box on the southwest corner of the outside building. Um, any questions about the election tomorrow you can contact the city clerk office at 414-766-7000. Thank you Catherine and You're again welcome. we urge you all to exercise your right to vote but do it safely. Practice the social distancing. Use all the CDC recommendations. There will be uh, people there to get you in and out of there as expediently as possible. So, uh, could I just ask yes. about it? Uh, pens, bring your own pens, or are you handing out pens? I've heard different stories on that. So, what we're recommending is if voters choose to bring your own pen, you may use a black or blue ballpoint pen. We have also been provided with 2,000 pens that are essentially disposable, but maybe reusable. So we are going to use those pens first. And should we run out of those, we will be um, wiping down and sanitizing pens for reuse. Mike? Uh, Catherine, what about, what about the, uh, hello. What about the uh, announcement of the, uh, the results for the election? Uh, how is that gonna be handled? Will, will there be results at the end when the polls close tomorrow or not? So Alderman Toman, there are some changes that are happening. It seems to be almost hourly today for elections. Um, the last order that I have seen, um, and my understanding is Supreme Court is still reviewing um, some previous orders that have been made. Uh, the last order I have is that the results would need to be reported um, post April 13th. Um, so we will be very clear in our communication once we get some direction tomorrow morning by the Wisconsin Election Commission on um, how that will uh, transpire. I think the two things out there that we're waiting to have some direction from the state, uh, when is the deadline to return your absentee ballot and um, when will that reporting occur? So we will look for guidance from the state and we'll make sure we put that on our website and our social media um, and have it here, information here at City Hall as well. All right. Thank you for that information, Catherine. You're welcome. Um, item three is the approval of minutes of 317.20. Rakowski, make a motion. We approve the minutes of March 17, 2020. Dukniak, second. Roll call. Alderman Lorick. Aye. Dukniak? Aye. Toman? Aye. Gail? Aye. Guzikowski? Aye. Kurkowski? Aye. And item four is informational from our health officer uh, on the COVID-19 update. Darcy? Good evening, Darcy DuBois, health officer with the health department. Um, I just read another report as of right now, we have 33 confirmed cases of COVID in Oak Creek. Um, we've also had, um, unfortunately, two deaths of two Oak Creek residents. 
and we have had 164 Oak Creek residents that have tested negative. In Milwaukee County, the total number of cases is just over 1,300 with 45 deaths and the state has more than 2,400 cases and 77 deaths at this point. Uh, we are working with one of our long-term care facilities, which has experienced several residents and staff who have tested positive. So we're working um, quite a bit with that facility, but as well with all long-term care facilities, nursing homes and group homes and things to implement infection prevention measures to the extent that they possibly can to protect the health of their residents. Uh, we are in the process in the health department of bringing on six additional temporary staff. We've got two school nurses, which we really appreciate, some staff from the library, and we'll be working also with the management intern to help us with the increased caseload. We're seeing a lot more tests come through and a lot more residents and contacts that we need to contact. Um, and we've also implemented a new workflow, which is hopefully also to help us kind of manage that, that workload. We are at this point working seven days a week um, and we expect at least over the next couple of weeks that we'll continue to see an increase of cases um, before things start to slow down. Any questions? Questions for Darcy, Steve? I, I don't have any, any questions, uh, Darcy. Uh, can I make comments, is that okay? Or we wanna do questions first? Uh, I guess, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, as the uh, aldermanic representative on the Board of Health, I just want to thank you for what I understand are some very long hours you're putting in. And, and I want to say this uh, contrary to what one resident is, is saying on a Facebook group that the health department's not doing anything and uh, demanding daily updates and even a, a meeting of the Board of Health. Well, uh, personally, I see those updates every day from the police department, the city website, the health department. I don't know what that person's missing because I get the daily updates on Facebook. So, and um, to call a meeting would be useless because we would get the same stuff we, I read every day. And then we'd have 10 people sitting in a, in a room going, uh-huh, okay. And we wouldn't, so I just wanna thank you for that. And uh, I, I know that uh, the if the Board of Health was here, you know, we'd all be in agreement that uh, you're doing a, a great job in uncharted territory and we appreciate what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Any other questions for Darcy? No, Darcy, again, thank you on behalf of the city. Uh, we do appreciate it and remember, we can get through this together and the best thing we can do together is stay apart. So, <laughs> so um, Moving on to a little happier news, we do have a milestone here in Oak Creek. Uh, we are going to celebrate uh, Ruth Dinberg's 100th birthday this April. So, Catherine, if you would please read that proclamation. Certainly. Congratulations to Ruth, Ruth G. Dinberg on her 100th birthday. Whereas Ruth Dinberg was born on April 6, 1920 to Gus and May Clum of Garfield, Washington. And whereas Ruth, in addition to Louise, Francis, Grace, Geraldine, and William was the youngest daughter born to Gus and May. And whereas Ruth, along with her parents and siblings, moved to Idaho when she was just a little girl before the family eventually settled in Wisconsin. And whereas Ruth went to the Bureau of Nursing for training on practical nursing and would assist her sister Geraldine, who was the head nurse at the Milwaukee Hospital. And whereas Ruth met and married her husband Bill and they had two children, Doug and Betty, together. In addition, to being a loving wife and mother, Ruth Dinberg has been graced with four grandchildren. And whereas Ruth Dinberg has many fond memories of standing by the railroad tracks and waving to her dad, a railroad engineer as he passed by, pulling taffy with her mother and sisters, camping with the family in tents in the Yellowstone area where the bears are, and caring for the cows near her aunt's home in Milwaukee. And whereas Ruth will be 100 years young on Monday, April 6, 2020, a celebration in honor of Ruth will be held at her residence, Meadowmere Oak Creek Senior Living Community, on April 10th, 2020. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor of the, Oak, of the city of Oak Creek hereby congratulates Ruth Deanberg on her milestone 100th birthday. Be it further resolved that the city clerk be, and she is hereby directed to transmit a suitable copy of this proclamation to Ruth Deanberg, dated the 6th day of April, 2020. 
Thank you, Catherine. And Ruth, on behalf of the Common Council and myself, we want to wish you a happy 100th birthday. And this is actually uh, your date of birth. So congratulations to you. And we look forward to when me and the clerk can come out and present you uh, personally with this proclamation as things clear up. So again, please enjoy your day and many more. So, okay. Um, Item six is our first public hearing. It's consideration of a conditional use submitted by Bruce Kensick for the Oak Creek Hotel Association for a conditional use permit for the property located at 9315 South 13th. Catherine, would you read that in the record, please? Certainly. Public hearing number one is to consider a request submitted by Bruce Kinseth, Oak Creek Hotel Associates, LLC, for a conditional use permit for a hotel in the property located at 9315 South 13th Street. Applicant is Bruce, Bruce Kinseth, Oak Creek Hotel Associates, LLC. Property owner is American Property Acquisition, LLC. There follows the legal description Date of notice is February 26, 2020. Thank you, Catherine. Doug? Thank you. Good evening. Uh, I'm going to change things up a little bit this evening, uh, given uh, the uh, our protocols for our, our meeting. Uh, for those of you who are watching, it had an opportunity to uh, register or pre-register to participate in the public hearing. Uh, I understand we do have several people who have done that uh, for future reference, and we'll, we'll get this out, and I'm sure it's been out on our, our, our Facebook and our city website, but in the future, as long as we're holding these types of meetings, you do have to pre-register if you want to participate. You can always live stream uh, on the city's webpage or you, the city's YouTube channel, uh, but uh, this is how we will conduct this meeting and future plan commission meetings. So our first public hearing uh, this evening, uh, Kevin, is there any way we can kind of Get that full screen? I don't, I don't know. Uh, it, it is a, for a conditional use permit for a hotel on a portion of the property at 9315 South 13th Street. Uh, the applicant, uh, Kinseth Hospitality, is re requesting approval of the Abbott Hotel. Uh, council will recall that there was an amendment to an existing planning development to allow hotels as a conditional use that was approved in January of this year. And you do have a copy of that, that signed uh, PUD agreement or that amendment to the PUD. Uh, the property itself is on 13th Street north of Ryan Road uh, between I-94 and 13th Street as depicted on the highlighted uh, map uh, and on your screen. Uh, what's on the screen at this point is a proposed site plan, although the site and building plans and uh, landscaping plans would be approved by the Planning Commission at a later date. But in essence, the proposal is for, it it's shows the 95, it's actually 92 room Avid Hotel brand, which is a, a franchise of the uh, Intercontinental Hotel Group. Um, it is on the western part of the property and it would be utilizing a shared driveway with Steinhoffels. Um, some of the things that I just want to call to your attention about this hotel, and we'll get into that with respect to the conditions or restrictions, are that uh, it doesn't, does include a workout room and gym facility uh, does include an actual a swimming pool, and there are certain other features which we had actually asked for as part of the conditional use permit to really make sure that the hotel that's being developed is the hotel that's being proposed. And and as we've seen in the past, uh, conditional use permits uh, do run with the land, so we just want to make sure uh, for the plan commission of the council for the neighborhood that uh, the hotel that is developed is in fact the hotel that they're proposing the applicants have uh, have they said that yes this is the hotel we're going to build so this is just we're going to rate that in the conditional use permit just to make sure again shared access uh, with the Steinhoffel's property to the north uh, we do have some conceptual renderings of the proposed hotel again those plans would have to meet our architectural standards and would be submitted for approval by the plan commission at a later date. Uh, I think they're actually coming up this next plan commission meeting. Uh, with that uh, in mind and recognizing again that staff will continue to work with the applicants to further refine the proposal as necessary, uh, staff is recommending that the proposed conditional use permit for a hotel for a portion of the property at 9315 South 13th Street be approved subject to the conditions and restrictions that are presented to you. Um, 
at, this is the point in time where I'd say, if anyone has any questions, comments, et cetera, to please approach the microphone. We're gonna do it a little differently. So I, I understand that uh, we have a moderator who's going to call on you uh, and go, you're going to have an opportunity to present uh, your comments, questions to the Common Council. So we're gonna try that now. And I think we're gonna call three times still, right? Yes, we sure. will. We will go by the rules. So this will be the first call. Anybody wishing to speak, we will need your name and address, please. So we have Craig Sadomke with American Construction Services. I am here. Can you guys hear me? Uh, yes. Go ahead. A little louder, please, if you could. Sure. Um, I, I'm, uh, again, as was said, my name is Craig Sedonico. I'm president of American Construction Services and American Architectural Group. Uh, we're the organization uh, working with Bruce Kinseth and the landowner on the development. And I'm here to answer questions if you've got them. Thank you very much. Um, we also have an Aaron Coach with a Pinnacle Engineering Group. Yep. Can you hear me? Yep. Go ahead, Aaron. Uh, my name is Aaron Cook. I'm with Pinnacle Engineering. I'm the civil engineer on the project. And uh, I guess uh, likewise with Craig, I'm here to answer any uh, questions that you might have on the site. Thank you. That's it. Uh, we will make a second call. A third and final call. Anybody wishing to speak? Now close the public hearing and go on to item seven, which is consideration of an ordinance approving that conditional use permit for the hotel on the property at 9315 South 13th Street. Open it up for questions from council. Uh, Ken. Thank you, Danny. Uh, I read through the, you know, the various background on the Planning Commission reports. I didn't see anything really overly controversial. Strikes me as a uh, value-added use of a really tough piece of property, and I think it would be additive to the community. So I'm in favor. Doug, any comments? Yeah, the, the one thing I will note, as, as we've worked with the applicants to include, for instance, to include a, a indoor pool as part of this proposal, the actual room count changed from 95 to 92. So you'll notice under uh, section 3A, it calls, it's very specific as to the type of hotel. So when we, and the plan commission, and I think Alderman Guzikowski uh, was, I don't want to say insistent, but the, we just wanted to ensure that this, uh, the, the, the mid-scale hotel that is being proposed doesn't become a, an extended stay, which, you know, has its own set of impacts, which, uh, you know, at, at this point, the, the plan commission really didn't weigh in on that. So with that, you know, we wanted to make sure they had, they had a pool, a fitness area, out, outdoor patio area, uh, that they didn't have long-term, um, that they had daily made, daily housekeeping service uh, available, that they had it staffed 24-7, uh, things of that nature, so that we just ensured that the type of product that's being proposed right now is in fact the type of product which is going to ultimately be developed. But with that level of specific, with that specified level of detail, uh, we do call for a 95 guest rooms in the hotel, which was the previous proposal prior to the pool being inserted into the design. So the actual count is 92. So I may just make that change to that section to uh, uh, make a 92, or if you want to say a maximum 95, that'd be that'd be fine as well. Well, we appreciate it, obviously, because obviously this area has been subject to some proposals in the past that had raised some concerns in the city. So I think that's uh, moves well taken. So we appreciate it. Anybody else? Chris, anything? No, I'll just thank the staff again for working uh, through this because there were concerns brought up and um, worked uh, diligently and then kept the plan moving forward as well. So everyone worked together on it. So thank you very much. Um, I just have a comment and a question, and it might pertain to law enforcement as well. Steve, you might be able to answer this. As we come across projects like this in Oak Creek, would it be worthwhile to put in conditions and restrictions that they'll meet with the police, uh, with law enforcement, uh, as to um, protection of property and and nuisance calls at at that can pop up at these these type of places would it would it would it serve any purpose would it help us certainly i mean the, the council chose to put that language in I, I think that's 
probably uh, whether it's uh, enacted by this council as part of the conditions and restrictions or just uh, accomplished between the, the, the city and the property owner and the management company as a as the right way of doing business, I think that certainly makes sense for each and every hotel property management company to have that conversation with the police department. Just a minute. I, I would hope they are, but I, I don't know if it would help law enforcement at all. You want to come up, Steve, and just yeah. your opinion, just for future. I don't want to throw a wrench in this one, but uh, anything that we can do to help the business and, and help you guys as well. Right this week. Um, we uh, we try to reach out to the business groups as we can, especially when bigger events. Um, and one example, I, I would hate to have language that would curtail somebody from coming in, but I think if they want to be good business partners, as Doug said, we can we can definitely continue to do that. Um, I tried to get a hotel group together with the DNC coming in, and we only have eleven hotel motels, but I had three three represented. Well, I shouldn't say that one represented three separate hotels and then the rest were there. So whether it was poor communication or they weren't able to get somebody there, we still reach out. We still work with them. I don't know if the language will uh, help that continue. We're still doing that. Okay. All right. Anything else? Nothing else. Motion, please. On seven. Is the council makes a motion that it counts. Uh, Mr. Council makes a motion that the council adopt ordinance number 2968, an ordinance to approve the conditional use permit for a hotel on a portion of the property of 9315 South 13th Street. Kurkowski will second. Before you order on that, could you please, uh, if it'd be your pleasure to include the uh, under 3A uh, maximum of 95 guest rooms? Yes. As submitted by Doug. Her? Yeah, I concur. Um, roll call. Alderman Dukniak. Aye. Toman. Aye. Gail. Aye. Guzikowski. Aye. Kurkowski. Aye. Lorik. Aye. Thank you, Greg. Almost forgot about you there. Um, item eight um, consideration of conditional use submitted by Lauren Rehorse, uh, Live Oak Creek Health, for a conditional use permit for a licensed massage therapy clinic located on the property at 9555 South Howell. Catherine, if you would. Certainly. Public hearing number two is to consider a request submitted by Lauren Lucia Rehorst, Live Oak Health LLC, for a con conditional use permit for a licensed massage therapy clinic on the property located at 9555 South Hall Avenue. Applicant is Lauren Lucia Rehorst, Live Oak Health LLC. Property owner is Gary and Lori Hintz. Legal description there follows. Date of notice is March 11th, 2020. Thank you, Catherine. You're welcome. Uh, Doug. Thank you once again, good evening. Uh, this proposal for a conditional use permit for a massage therapy clinic for Live Oak Health is for the property, the Oak Brook Center, 9555 South Hall Avenue. The business itself uh, doing, um, well, they are engage in uh, permitted uses at this point in time is already open or may not be open right now, but uh, they have received occupancy for certain aspects of their business. It's the massage therapy that under our zoning code does we require a conditional use permit. We have been working with the applicant and then they have been uh, uh, amenable to applying for this conditional use permit. We've still allowed them to open up the business without having the massage therapy component uh, going on at this point in time. And obviously that's all changed with the with the presence orders that are in place. But uh, this conditional use permit would legitimize the, the use of that property for massage therapy. Uh, it is certainly something that is going to be state regulated. Uh, the Planning Commission has reviewed the proposal for massage therapy in this location, and they have recommended their approval subject to the attached conditions and restrictions. Again, this being a public hearing, I think we have at least one one person who uh, wishes to speak with relate with respect to this proposed conditional use permit. And at that point in time, we'll open it up to the public hearing and we'll call three times. This public hearing is now open. This will be the first call. Kevin, you got somebody for us? All right, uh, Lucia Rehorse, the applicant. Yes, I'm here, Lauren Lucia Rehorse. Thank you very much. I'm here to answer any questions you may have. Great, thank you, Lauren. Um, second call. 
Third and final call, anybody wishing to speak? And I'll close the public hearing and we'll move on to nine, which is consideration of an ordinance for the conditional use permit for that license massage therapy clinic at the multi-tenant building at 9555 South Howell. Open it up to the council for questions, comments. None. Ken? Just, uh, it's in my district, uh, Gary's building there. I have not heard any uh, feedback from any residents in, in the district. And I know Doug's been working with Gary and his wife for a long time on, on this particular issue to get this squared away. So we appreciate the effort. This looks to be a, probably a very similar use to what's already in the building, so. You're correct. They did come into planning and uh, we talked to the business owner and um, it's a great addition to the area. So looking forward to it. Seeing nothing else, motion on nine. Thank I'll you. Move to approve that. ordinance 2969. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, Doug. All right. Third call. But I heard someone. Yeah. Lauren, well, I said thank you. I, I probably spoke out of turn. I'm sorry. No, no, go right ahead. <laughs> I just said thank you. Oh, oh we'll, we'll take that. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where were we? Okay. Approve it. There we go. Got a motion. Make it a motion, yeah. Uh, yeah. Gil moves to approve ordinance 2969, approving a conditional use permit for a licensed massage therapy clinic in the multi tenant building on the property at 9555 South Hall Avenue. Guzikowski, I'll second. Roll call. Alderman Tolman. Aye. Gail? Aye. Guzikowski? Aye. Kirkowski? Aye. Lorick? Aye. <laughs> Duke Aye. Okay, moving on. Item 10 is consideration of an ordinance number 2970 amending section 11.01 .01 of the municipal code relating to local local enforcement of the Wisconsin state statutes for emergency public health violations. Um, Steve, you have it? Aye, Chief I, Anderson? Sure. Uh, Chief Anderson from the police department. I will start with this one. Um, this is with our current situation with the uh, pandemic and the governor's orders that have come out. Um, many chiefs have gotten together to discuss a ways that we can, if we have to get to the enforcement portion of people not following these orders, um, are the ordinance that the law enforcement or our officers have the ability to enforce primarily fall under chapters 10 and 11 of our, our local ordinance. Otherwise we have to go for state charges, um, which would mean downtown. Um, by adopting these two ordinances under chapter 11, this gives our officers the ability to issue citations for these orders instead of applying for or seeking criminal charges at, in circuit court. Um, they both, and this is a trend that many municipalities are going to right now, um, if we get to there, our primary goal is education and conformance uh, for our businesses and residents. But if we have to use something, this gives us the tool to be able to do that um, in the future. We appreciate that. And we understand that you do need these tools in these, these unprecedented times. So questions for Chief Anderson? Hey, oh, Solomon Krakowski, First District. Does this have any... Uh... I understand it's probably a permanent thing, but it's only going to be around for as long as this uh, emergency orders are in place. This will be a permanent change and it will allow us to continue. It's just it's going to apply to future orders or future violations of the health codes that fall under. Melissa may have to help me, but under the section of our ordinance that Darcy would oversee. So there are other things where somebody could be, have an infectious disease and they have to maintain staying where they're at. And if they fail to follow that order, this still gives us a tool as a police department to handle that situation in the future as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Dan? Yes, thanks, Dan. Uh, Steve, clarify for me. These are ordinances that are already on the books at the state level, right? The, so they're we're state statutes. Them, we're incorporating them into our municipal code. Correct. Right? And you say these powers currently would be given your folks uh, if required or needed uh, at some point under Darcy's direction to implement and enforce her, her orders or state? I can try that one, Alderman Gale. So the idea is under chapter eight of our municipal code, that's the health code. There's significant authority that's given to our health officer or Darcy here to enforce. Given her 
Workload is one way of saying it right now during a pandemic, during a crisis. Chapter 252 of the statutes is regarding communicable diseases. And so by adopting the one ordinance under chapter 11 of our municipal code, which is essentially enforcing nuisances and other violations, the police department would have the authority to issue citations at the local level. They already have the ability, that being the police department, to issue criminal charges anyway. But given the fact that if there really is a need to issue some sort of deterrent in, by way of citations in terms of sending the message about what an essential or a non-essential business might be under the governor's safer at home order, for example, or for any other situation, as Alderman Kurkowski asked, this will be on our books in our code so that there is that I guess I would say double downing. If the health officer has the inability or would like to um, have the police department enforce, and if the police department is having that contact, they would have the legal authority to write those citations. So I meant to make that clear, not to confuse you, but the bottom line is we already have that authority for the health officer. Chapter 252 is now being adopted in our code under Chapter 11 to allow the police department to enforce as well. Okay, and um, is that at the PD's discretion, Darcy's discretion, or just kind of circumstances dictate? I'm, I'm, I'm always leery about... I can explain an example. Yeah. So the health department will give us orders of people that have to stay where they're supposed to be or businesses that have to close. This gives us the authority, once we're given that order, if we and they always say when those orders are lifted during that time it eliminates us to have to go back to the health department and say okay they're out of their house today how do you want us to proceed they're in violation of an order that we have standing on the books for us the health the police officer can take immediate action and say you have a communicable disease or you're in a non-essential business you're not allowed to be open we can deal with that immediately instead of having to go to the health department it takes a layer away from the enforcement aspect of can it. You, can you use current, like, the sort of the conduct uh, laws to deal with that? Sure. Oh, sorry. I mean to speak over you, Chief. But we would still have that enforcement authority for obstructing and disorderly conduct already available. There might be some offenses that are better met by way of Chapter 252 and certainly in an emergency situation like this. The other reality of it is we are in Milwaukee County, so the likelihood of trying to have charges issued on a criminal level for something that might otherwise be delegated down to the local level is just our trying to be prudent and get ahead of it if we can. So near term, obviously with you know, going on, our orders under the current health orders from Darcy and the state kind of dictate activity. When those go away, I think that's a good way of saying it. That's my perspective, I would say, no yeah, mine alone. Well, I would say this. I mean, there are other communicable disease issues yeah, I mean, that go we've on. Had, we've had TB, I mean. Sure. Thing. And generally, the idea is for education to try to garner compliance. And so that's still where we're trying to go. Um, I would say from my role as a city attorney, I won't speak for the police department or the health department, but I think that the consensus is we're all trying to adapt quickly and we're all trying to do the right thing. So that would be the idea. The concern is we don't know what the time frame is. So we thought it'd be prudent to put this before you and then tell us if you'd like to proceed in that manner. No matter what, we have state laws that. Correct. On the books, right. The concern I would say from my perspective is if there's a real issue in terms of getting something charged, even if there is something from the police department that's submitted of a criminal nature and maybe it meets that test, whether or not there's the ability, especially now with circuit courts being limited and how they're operating and how they're running, this would not necessarily be a fast tracked matter. We might have to look for other remedies, other relief, and might need to think more creatively. And this is frankly just back to basics, updating our code. And, and one thing, chapter 11.01, is filled with numerous statutes that fall in line with exactly what we're asking to do right now. They're all state laws that we have adopted so we can handle them municipally and write a ticket instead of proceeding downtown with the state charge if 
that's what we deem fit. It gives us an option. So much, much of the discretion that was done at, at your level and, and your officers. Yes. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, seeing none, uh, motion please. Rakowski make a motion that the council adopt ordinance number 2970 amending section 11.01 of the municipal code relating to local law enforcement of Wisconsin statutes for emergency public health violations. Yeah, second. Roll call. Alderman Gale. Aye. Kuzikowski. Aye. Kurkowski. Aye. Lorick. Aye. Dukniak. Aye. Toman. Aye. Item 11 is consideration of a resolution number 12151. 040620, an emergency resolution consolidating polling places due to the COVID-19. Catherine, you got this one? Certainly. Uh, so as you're aware, um, due to the circumstances, we realized some efficiencies by being able to consolidate polling places from six different locations to one. Um, we are able to use the currently not in use, Oak Creek High School. Uh, we were able to accommodate all six locations there. Um, the min minimum amount of poll workers that you can have working at any one location is three. Um, in a typical election, we operate with between nine and 15. It, you know, if it's a slow, low turnout or a high turnout, and currently I'm at four, lo four poll workers per location. So I have enlisted some volunteers and um, some some other National Guard and um, such to come and help tomorrow. Uh, but really, uh, we had to realize that this was um, something that needed to happen to be able to facilitate the selection for the city. Right, thank you, Catherine. You're and again, I think everybody realizes this has been a very fluid situation. Um, it was changing not only daily, but hourly going down here. Uh, we had to do something and again, is a unique circumstance. So. Um, questions, comments for Catherine? Nope. Uh, Rich? Yeah, uh, Catherine, Alderman Duke, the third district. We're just using the main building. We're not using the ninth grade campus at all. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, we're asking voters to come into the main entrance on the south side of the main high school. Um, and then there's many different exits. All the uh, districts will be located in the main large gymnasium. Um, with our expected turnout, it should fit very comfortably um, and we were able to organize it for a very nice traffic flow to limit social or to, um, I guess, promote social distancing. Okay, thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Ken? Just came in, Catherine. I'm assuming you guys took care of this. Do we do, are we doing some wayfinding or signage at the old existing polling places? To I'm glad you asked. We are. So um, at the six different locations, um, today our DPW is kind enough to make special signs. Um, if any of the voters go to any of the existing polling locations that we typically use, there is a sign advising all voters in the city to please go to the high school to vote uh, tomorrow during the election. Those are already in place as they also are here at City Hall. We have them on every entrance. Um, so it's a very clear message. Um, we're also doing social messaging as well as the website, trying to advise voters the best we can. Great. Um, yeah. Good to hear. Okay. Um, motion, please. We'll move to approve resolution 12151-040620, an emergency resolution consolidating polling places due to COVID-19. Guzikowski, I'll second. Roll call. Alderman Guzikowski. Aye. Kirkowski? Aye. Lorick? Aye. Dukniak? Aye. Toman? Aye. Gale? Aye. Item 12 is informational and normally our treasurer would be here, but she's practicing uh, very wise social distancing. Um, so if there are any questions regarding um, our treasurer's report for the month, um, either I can handle it, we can direct it towards Bridget. I'm sure she'd be able to answer the questions. Um, but if you do take a look, it's really just our beginning balance, um, the interest earned and and what we've increased or decreased. And again, this is just general tax rolls coming in and out, being paid out to the different municipalities. Bridget, would you like to comment anything on it? I don't think I got her. 
That's okay. Any questions as okay, you guys look it over? I was just trying to find the report. I have no comments unless there are questions. Oh, that's right. You don't. Okay. Um, any questions? If not, I'll try to sum make a summation of it. Okay. Uh, seeing none on 12, we'll move on to the license committee. And at this time, I'll turn that over to Alderman Kurkowski. Thank you, Mayor. I trust everybody has had an opportunity to review the uh, Common Council report regarding license committee. Does anybody have any questions, cares, or concerns? Seeing none, then Kurkowski make a motion to grant the various license requests as listed on the April 6, 2020 license committee report. Next second. Roll call. Alderman Kurkowski. Aye. Lorick. Aye. Dukniak? Aye. Tillman? Aye. Gail? Aye. Guzikowski? Aye. And item 14 is our vendory summary report, um, concluding March 31st, 2020. Um, please take a look, and if you have any questions, um, be happy to answer them. Are satisfied, we'll entertain a motion. Okay, we'll move to approve the March 31st, 2020 vendor summary report in the total amount of $1,328,565.43. Is it call scale second? Roll call. Alderman Lorick? Aye. Dukniak? Aye. Tillman? Aye. Gail? Aye. Guzikowski? Aye. Kirkowski? Aye. And item 15 is consideration of a motion to convene into closed session pursuant to Wisconsin state statutes to discuss the following. A, section 19.85 sub 1 sub C to discuss the performance evaluation for the city administrator. B, section 19.85 sub 1 sub G to consider the claim for unlawful tax of Red's novelty. Item C, Section 19.85 sub 1 sub G to consider the claim for unlawful tax of Reggie's amusements. And D, section 19.85 sub 1 sub G to discuss Tamika Bates et al. versus the City of Oak Creek et al. County case number 2019 CV 003954. President Gell. Thank you, Mayor. Gail moves to convene in the co session pursuant to Wisconsin state statutes to discuss the following A, section 19.85 sub 1 sub C to discuss the performance evaluation for the city administrator. B, section 19.85 sub 1 sub G to consider the claim for unlawful tax of Reds and Novelty Limited. C, section 19.85 sub 1 sub G to consider the claim for unlawful tax of Reggie's amusement. And D, section 19.85 sub 1 sub G to discuss Tamikia Bates et al. versus the City of Oak Creek et al. Case number 2019-CV-003954. Guzikowski, I'll second. Roll call. Alderman Dukniak. Aye. Tillman. Aye. Gale. Aye. Guzikowski. Aye. Kurkowski. Aye. Lorik. Aye. We will now convene in closed session and reconvene at its conclusion. Reconvene We'll now reconvene into open session. You want a motion, Ed Ken? Yeah, Gail moves to reconvene in open session. Who's the Gail? Second. Roll call. Alderman Tillman. Aye. Gail? Aye. Guzikowski? Aye. Kurkowski? Aye. Lorik? Aye. Dukniak? Aye. And item 17 is to consider any uh, action if needed on items A through D and 15. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, with that said, Gail is going to move that the Common Council deny the unlawful tax claim of Red's Novelty Limited and issue a notice of disallowance. Is it call scale second? Roll call. Alderman Gail. Aye. Guzikowski? Aye. Kurkowski? Aye. Lorik? Aye. Dukniak? Aye. Toman? Aye. On item 15C, Gail will move that the Common Council deny the unlawful tax claim of Red's Amusements and issue a notice of disallowance. 
Kuzikowski, I'll second. Roll call. Alderman Guzikowski? Aye. Kirkowski? Aye. Lork? Aye. Dukniak? Aye. Toman? Aye. Gale? Aye. Then on item 15D, Gale will move that uh, the Common Council approve a settlement of the claim in Milwaukee County case number 2019CB003954 in the amount of $5,000 upon receipt of a fully executed release of all claims. Kuzikowski, I'll second. Roll call. Alderman Kirkowski? Aye. Lork? Aye. Dukniak, Aye. Toman, Aye. Gail, Aye. Kuzikowski. Aye. Okay, and before we adjourn, just a couple reminders as always. We are all in this together. We need to keep our distance. Please do not go out unless you absolutely have to. When you do, send one person out from a household. We don't need families out there showing up to vote uh, or to grocery shop or to things like that. Uh, folks, this is very serious. Oak Creek has over 30 confirmed cases right now. That was a report. That number has doubled in five days. Five days ago, we were at 15. We can do better as a city, so please keep your distance. Um, and a reminder, voting is taking place tomorrow. Polls open at 7 a.m. Polls will be open 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. at the Oak Creek High School, and uh, we are practicing as many safe um, sanitizing and practices that we can uh, to make sure both our poll workers and our voters safety. Thank you, Catherine. And remember, the city can only be as safe as you make us safe with your cooperation. So please be respectful of others when you're there and keep it short and brief. Uh, adjournment, please. Else can make a motion to adjourn. We have a second. Roll call. Alderman Lurk. Aye. Dukniak, Aye. Toman, Aye. Gail, Aye. Guzikowski, Aye. Kirkowski. Aye. Good night, everybody. Stay safe. Good night.